Okay. Um, so if you don't have these uh, images printed out um, that you're wanting to use for your low poly, you need to go back and watch the video prior to this one um, and see where I talk about the discussion board and narrowing down your image in that discussion board um, and then you are going to create a Word document, put that final image um, on the document over and over and over again. Uh, four times, fit it onto one page. You need to change the orientation of your page, you can, um, but just four times will do. Uh, and please, please, please print it to the color printer, not to the photo printer, the color printer. Okay, um, there are four good ways that you could start um, breaking up your image into low poly. This will be step one, this will be step two, and this will be step three, and this one will be step four. Okay. So for the very first image, you just want to break it up into main shapes. What do I mean by main shapes? Um, big chunks, okay? So like the ear is a main shape, like a triangle. Um, the nose here is kind of a main shape. The eyes, that little protrusion of his mouth. Um, the head, this white part of his chest. The arm, the body, and I even went and outlined um, the outside of my, my artboard, okay? Uh, the little dots you see are me just making pretend anchor points. Um, I think it's a good habit to get into when you trace this, that way you know where your lines are at. Um, please feel free to grab a ruler from the back, um, but if you feel like you can make pretty straight lines without it, that is okay. So start by outlining main shapes. Um, so again, could say the chest here is the main shape broken up. I'm drawing my little anchor points. Could break up the arm into a main shape up to his face. Coming down from there. I want to break his body up, his eyes, any like big shapes that you know for sure you're going to want to include. You want this to be filled with triangles, maybe this little nose to be filled with triangles. Break up any important um, clear cut shapes, okay? Everything you break up will become its own um, piece where you break up, ugh, where you break it up into smaller parts. So it's important that you're really breaking up anything that you feel like is an important part to include. The second part is thinking about the form here. Obviously, uh, my cat is not flat in real life, but it is flat in this version on paper. You can see that I've started to draw um, pencil marks showing the curve of maybe his chest, the curve of his back. Um, I've added in marks going back in his face, right? Because up front is probably flat to us, but right here, his cheek probably starts to angle back his head, right? Because his head wraps around. He's a 3D object, okay? So we have to think about how this object uh, or form would look in space. So I'm just making some quick guidelines in pencil here, and then you can go back and trace them in Sharpie. So again, I know that this part of his face is going to be facing me straight on. I know that... Um, this part of his face, his nose might come down a little bit. This part of his face is starting to go back towards his ears, and I'm making little anchor points there. I know that this part of his face is going to go back, so I'm making that sort of shape heading back in that direction. I know if I have his arm broken up here that his body starts to curve, so maybe I add that curve into his body. It's heading back into space. I know that his chest is going back into space. 
and I'm adding that in right there and I can keep adding that line in to show the bend of that form. So you need to think about what is my object, um, what would that look like if it was here in the flush, would it bend backwards, does it have really sharp edges going backwards, um, make pencil guidelines on here, okay? That will help you kind of figure out, oh yeah, this would curve back. That does go back into space in that direction. Um, for spot three here, I have this one kind of messed up. It's triangles. So when you finally get um, the form squared away, so you can see in this one, I have the curves of his body going back, the curves of his face. Um, the front part of the face is flat, straight towards us. Then you can start to add triangles. Um, you could go in and just kind of add them however you want, okay? But it is also important to think um, about the angles again. How is that object going back into space? So you can see over here, I had squares kind of, or maybe a rhombus uh, between these four anchor points. And I could have split my triangle up this way between those two anchor points, or this way, the way that I did. The reason I sent that um, line back in that direction to create these two triangles versus this direction is because I know that this portion of his body angles back in that direction. So I'm trying to pull the viewer's eyes backwards when I'm adding those lines in versus adding them across in this direction, which would kind of pull our eyes this way. So you can be pretty intentional um, when you start adding lines in to your triangles here. Think about where that line would pull the viewer's eye, okay? Um, same thing up here with his head. I added in some lines that kind of pull our eye up towards his head, pull some out on the ear. Um, think about that as you are adding in lines to kind of finish off your triangles, okay? That is what I want to see. Um, and this image, so you would add step one into this image and step two, the form, into this image. And if you messed up a little bit in either of these, down here is the moment where you can correct it. Step four, you don't have to add any of the body in. Um, you can just do the background, okay? So that's when you go in and add in our anchor points to our background. I got one up there, one back here. One down here, one over here, one right here. Um, depending on what your background in, my is, is, mine is just a flat color. Um, think about how you want to break up that detail. Maybe you just want to do big uh, triangles of color. Maybe you want to include a little bit of the detail. Maybe you have mountains or something. Um, play around with that for your background and kind of draw it out in here. So don't draw anything on your subject for the background one. Up here, I want you to do all of your main shapes for your subject. And the second one, I want you to do all of your main shapes and the form. So thinking about how the object goes back into space. And the last one here, I want you to do all of the main shapes, the form, and add in your triangles. Okay, This will allow me to see your um, thought process within each step and it will allow you to kind of create Correct, correct. Ooh. Um, little things that you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that there, and you can change it down here. This one's kind of like your final version, but it also allows me to see your thought process up until this point. This one just gives me an idea of what you're thinking on the background, okay? Um, when you get this done, please submit it to Schoology. There is a location for you to submit um, just a picture of it, okay? Thanks.